So now that I have it in place, I can go ahead and modify that part of the text. You'll notice that I'm doing one word at a time because I find the spacing a little odd on this particular font and the P was just of uh, Potter was too far away. I didn't like that so I'm going to place it exactly where I want it. Yet before we place our Potter, let's go ahead and add some um, layer styles to Harry. And so I'm going to come over here to my Effects palette and click on Layer Styles. And that will bring up my bevel and there are many different um, choices for bevel. It really doesn't matter. You can simply just drag it, drop it directly onto the text and then I'm going to come over here into my Layers panel and simply double click the FX icon and that brings up my style settings. And so you can see here with Bevel, right now it's got a size 21 bevel and I actually don't like that. I want it to be much more subtle than that. So I'm simply highlighting that and choosing 5. And then I can just very quickly add a drop shadow to this. But again, notice that the drop shadow was much um, more dramatic than I want it to be, especially because I'm putting this text on a fairly dark background anyway. So I am going to come over here to my drop shadow size and type in 5. My distance, I'm also and notice the change. Distance, I'm also going to type in 5. And so again, much more subtle. And it is opacity 75% is fine. So now I've got my drop shadow and my bevel. So I can go ahead and hit OK. Now here's a really um, nice thing about Photoshop. I can simply right click on my Harry tutorial layer and I can um, duplicate the layer and I'll give it a new name and this time I'll call it um, Potter Tutorial and now I've got two of those layers so I will simply drag my hairy layer to about where I think I want it. And then clicking on my um, horizontal type tool, I'll just come in here and double click and type in Potter. Once you have the text placed where you want it, you're able to hit your little green check mark to accept it, to commit to the current edits, and then we're ready to save. So we can come up to save and I typically do a save as. You definitely can do a save for web as well. But I'll do a save as. Oops, let me make sure I'm on my screen here. Okay. To make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay. So when I do my Save As, it will automatically look um, to save it as my PSD file for Photoshop. I always save it as a Photoshop file first, and then I save it as my PNG file. Because if you ever want to come back and make changes, you want to make changes to the original Photoshop file not to your PNG or your JPEG file. So definitely save copies of both. I usually have in my images directory a, a folder just for PSD files and then I'll save the copy to whatever folder like for instance this Harry Potter folder. So if you come down to your format it will default to the Photoshop format. So we're going to click the down arrow and simply scroll down your list until you come to PNG. And then you're going to save it as, you know, whatever you want to save it. I'll just go ahead and save it as 
HP title copy. So the one thing that you also want to remember when you're saving is for the internet, don't leave any um, blank spaces. If you want it, if you don't like it all run together one word like that, simply hold down your shift key and um, choose your underscore and that way um, the computer won't have any problem reading that empty space. So then go ahead and hit save. It'll ask if you want interlaced or not and you're just going to hit click on none. I mean it um, defaults to that so simply hit OK and then your file is saved. So then you can go back to Studio J and simply upload your file and again you're going to go to wherever you have those photos and here's my HP title copy so I'm just going to upload that and sure enough I can see that it is uploading and then again because this I've turned the converted this title well into a photo well so I can simply drag and drop right onto that particular um, area. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please leave a comment on my YouTube channel. And be, while you're there, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future tutorials. If you have any um, suggestions or uh, ideas of what you'd like to see, let me know because I'm open to that as well. And be sure to check out my websites that you'll see at the end of this video. So until next time, happy scrapping!